All right, everyone. Um, thank you all for joining uh, this webinar. Uh, I'm going to get started on uh, this our presentation that I have prepared for not just uh, the poultry industry, but anyone who's interested in just learning a little bit about ozone and how we utilize it in the poultry um, industry and also how we use it in the processing areas. This can be applied to other um, industries as well, but our main focus in this going through this presentation is just the use of ozone um, in poultry plants and poultry processing areas. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Sanal Patel. Uh, I'm the SVP of engineering by trade. I'm a chemical engineer. Um, got my bachelor's uh, from Iowa State University. So uh, let's get started here. So a little bit about ozone solutions. Ozone solutions uh, recently um, purchased another ozone company called Ozark Technology. Um, a lot of uh, the industry has known about Ozark Technology from providing a service. Um, and what our whole focus is, is to help with service and engineering. That's combining the two elements together. That's where we feel um, what is needed for the industry. So our mission is to create a safer, cleaner and healthier world by using green technology. Ozone can be uh, applied as an organic label because it immediately reacts and converts back into oxygen. And I'll go through and explain that a little bit further through this presentation as well. Um, our envision or where we strive on um, is we engineer and manufacture high quality products um, and we empower people and organizations to create a cleaner, purified, and also to disinfect food uh, using a chemical free technology. Uh, we've been in business, uh, we've been uh, registered for 24 years, but we've been in business for about 34 years now. Uh, our whole team is an engineering focused and service focused company where we build custom systems for the customers and we also provide them with a full um, product line that's going to help them in in designing a system for their application. Um, a new piece of um, technology that we've brought to the front that the poultry industry has been looking for um, is providing a remote monitoring system. Basically, the need for this is that if someone is not located at location or you have a service tech who is not at location, having someone that has the ability to come um, and log into the unit wherever they are located and actually see if the system is running correctly, if there's any alarms or if there's any systems where that um, on the system that we can work on. Um, we also provide data. So using this remote monitoring system, we provide data that um, you can pull from this monitoring system that can help you with um, auditing whenever you get like an audit at your location or you need to provide a report or you just want to see how the system is running over a period of time. Uh, we are able to pull that data from this online uh, remote monitoring system. Ozone Solutions is completely manufactured in the United States. We have three locations. Uh, our main location, our headquarters is in Hall, Iowa. That's where Ozone Solutions started. Um, and then we have uh, two other uh, manufacturing locations. We have a location in Pennsylvania and we have a location in Arkansas. Um, the whole reason for this is just to get a, a global standpoint or more of a national standpoint of where most of our customers come from. So we have a lot of customers in the north, uh, Northeast and we also have a lot of customers where the poultry industry is um, in Arkansas, Texas, um, in that area with uh, Alabama. And that's so we, we strategically moved and we had another location over there to help out in our service department. So um, just to give you guys a little bit of background on how ozone is manufactured and what it takes to make ozone, um, a lot of people um, are either using some sort of disinfectant at their process, either using a chlorine or using a chlorine dioxide, using a PAA. A lot of the times this PAA or these other uh, chemicals are not 100% chemical. It's either some portion of it is water and then the remaining portion or slight portion of it is PAA. About 75% of the chemical is mostly water. So you're shipping water across the city or the country and you're actually paying for that, which, which is not actually a main cost to the system. So with ozone, what, what our whole goal is to have an ozone system at location, 
um, you basically take compressed air from the atmosphere so you're taking air from the atmosphere running through uh, our system to create ozone um, in in the atmosphere you have oxygen nitrogen and other gases we strip out the nitrogen element and you're left with oxygen and other impurities very small amount of other impurities but what we do is we take the oxygen molecules that are present uh, with enough energy you can actually split the oxygen molecule apart and then you're left with oxygen atoms those oxygen atoms can attach back onto an oxygen molecule to create an ozone molecule so as you can see from the diagram on the top, you have an oxygen molecule and you have an ozone molecule. Oxygen is O2, ozone is O3. And with enough energy, you can break apart this oxygen molecule to create that oxygen atom that gets attached to another oxygen molecule to create ozone. So hopefully this gives you guys an understanding on how um, ozone is actually manufactured and how we actually take um, atmospheric air and convert it into uh, something that helps us sanitize either sanitize disinfect or even help with cleaning of a specific product so that's our goal with using ozone is to provide you with something or a disinfectant that can help with sanitization at the long run so let's move on to our next slide here ozone gas basically is generated on uh, by the ozone generator, you have the oxygen and it creates ozone gas. Uh, once this ozone gas is actually manufactured, we, we have it react uh, or we have it uh, make contact with this bacteria cell. This can be any type of impurity, bacteria, viruses, tissue, layer, uh, blood, anything like that that can be oxidized. The ozone molecule comes along and it makes contact with the surface. Basically, as the ozone makes contact with it, it embeds itself into the, the cell wall and it actually starts to react. As this reaction happens, it, it makes a tiny hole. And as this ozone gets, this ozone reacts with the bacteria, the bacteria cell gets injured or this impurity gets a little bit oxidized. And as ozone is produced and it constantly reacts with this bacteria, it breaks it down completely and therefore it loses its shapes and it dies. So looking at that, this is basically a picture here that we have is a picture of an ozone generator. Um, you have your ozone generator, you can take that ozone gas and then dissolve it into a water stream. So this is a similar system to what a lot of our processes are using right now uh, for sanitizing agent for using ozonated water to put on the product, on belts, on uh, clean in place for using for um, the equipment, like the, the knives and stuff, they're using a lot of these type of systems for that application. So the one thing, that, the few things that we know about ozone, number one, that it's a very strong oxidizer. It's a disinfect, disinfectant, and it's a sanitizer. So it can be used for all of those three. A lot of people want to know what ozone can be, what's the right word usage of it. It's an oxidizer, it disinfects, and it sanitizes your product. It has to be generated on site. Ozone is made, as I explained before, how ozone is made it using oxygen, and it cannot be stored because within 30 minutes or three days, depending on which parameter you're looking at, it will break down. So it's very difficult to transport ozone gas. Um, so ozone has to be manufactured at location. There's different applications that we spoke about. Um, you have gaseous, where you don't need a full venturi injection system, or you can use ozonated water for sanitization. So ozone gas, we use that in a confined area, like your cooler rooms, your, your processing rooms, putting a constant level of ozone to sanitize the airspace. It can end, the ozone gas will go wherever the gas needs to go. Um, and then the aqueous system, we inject the ozone into the water system and that can be used as a sanitizer. So wherever the water goes, you can use it for cleaning your pipes. A lot of people like to get rid of uh, the calcium buildup that's in the pipes, or they want to use it for a surface sanitizer on their belts, or they want to use it for product sanitizer on the belts. So we use different space through, throughout the process. And I'll explain again what different applications that people are using it in the poultry industry. So the benefits of ozone in, a, in the poultry industry, a lot of people ask us, hey, we're using PAA or we're using chlorine. Are you guys going to completely replace that? Our goal is not to replace a sanitizing agent, it's to reduce. So if you're using like PAA 
an example would be PA. You know, the amount of PA that you use on specific parts or components can range between 400 ppm all the way up to 2000 ppm. Um, it, it hurts the product when you go to higher concentration. It hurts the employees when they breathe in that PA. So what our goal is to reduce this PA. So we, we reduce the PAC usage throughout the whole process. So that's a cost savings to you. Um, and you put the PA system, we just want a final dip in terms of the final code because ozone reacts and converts back into oxygen. We just need a final coating before it goes into the packaging. So therefore our goal is to use ozone water or ozone gas throughout your whole process and then the final portion use PA. So therefore immediately you can see you're reducing your harsh chemicals and you're reducing odors in terms of the odors that are generated from your chemical. Um, another thing is that a lot of antimicrobial steps that ozone, ozone is the strongest oxidizer known to mankind. So you can see here the oxidative uh, possibilities that ozone has. Um, it's extremely strong and immediately wants to react. So our goal is always to use ozone to help an immediate sanitizer. So a lot of people are using this for your belt sanitization or your product sanitization. Um, ozonated water is great for direct and indirect product as I spoke earlier, but it also increases um, your time that you have for not using. Uh, your staff has less time than for sanitizers to use for like if at the end of the third processing if you're just using it for sanitization you don't need to have multiple wash steps your ozone water can be just used and that's it you don't need to do another wash after your ozonated wash because ozone reacts converts back into oxygen you don't need to wash it like if you're using a, a foaming agent and then use water you see using multiple amount of uh cycles or multiple steps, you're reducing that factor. Looking at that, um, this is just an example of how we use aqueous ozone in, in the poultry industry. So here on the right, you can see here's the ozone generator. This is your on-site ozone production system. You supply your water stream to the unit. Ozone comes out. You can use it for wash down. This is a great picture to show you for uh, washing down your equipment. So um, like knives and stuff that if you needed to wash that in a gear, that would be a great option. And then you can also use it for different um, equipment connections. So if your equipment is using uh, water for sanita for even just cutting it to make it easier to use, we recommend connecting ozonated water just instead of using water or using any other chemical. Ozone at low concentrations or high concentration is great for getting the sanitization on your product. And then a lot of companies use ozonated water for belt sanitization because of that uh, biofilm layer that grows on it. So we use it for clean in place, uh, cleaning the bottom of the belt and then on the top having a poultry that sanitizes it. This is a great um, way to sanitize your product overall. So um, one thing that we definitely don't talk about much is increasing the shelf life. Because we are reducing the bacteria level on the product itself, you're actually increasing the shelf life of the product as a whole because you have so much, um, you're reducing your final bacteria level on the product. Um, taking a step into the gas, so a gas system compared to a water system would just be as the ozone generator generates the gas and then you inject it into the venture. For gases applications, instead of use it going into a venture injector, it would go directly into your airspace and we monitor this using an ozone monitor. That's one thing that's great with the ozone industry. Ozone Solutions has worked with multiple vendors to develop their monitoring equipment. And we do this is because we we are going to be the final users of this technology. So Ozone Solutions works very closely with vendors to understand how to grow it um, and understand what type of difficulties that we have combated over the process, over all the years that we've worked. Um, an example would just be like a lot of the times monitors read other um, impurities in the air. So our goal is to make sure that it's only reading ozone and not other impurities and giving us off readings and plants having issues with that. So uh, with gaseous ozone, the great thing is that it, you reduce cross contamination, you reduce mold and bacteria that's in the air sprays. 
a lot of companies are using it for odor treatment. So when you're first processing, when you're doing your kill step, there's a lot of the times when you get this awful odor or you get a lot of bacteria in that air. It's a great place to use ozonated gas. What we do is we maintain a concentration in it that's, that's safe to go in and it's completely uh, regulated using this monitor because we have OSHA standards that we have to stay below. And the OSHA regulation is a 0.1 ppm for an eight hour day for normal work um, in terms of activity. So we, we normally keep the ozone generator between 0 0.07 to 0 0.09. So we just have the system um, controlling the ozone concentration in that airspace. Um, and then when people are gone, let's say on a Saturday, Sunday, or when you have a shift where you just want to do complete sanitization, you can close it up completely and increase that concentration a little bit higher. When we do a higher treatment close to that one PPM mark, we call it shock treatment. And that just means that we're trying to treat every single impurity in the cracks on the sides. We're trying to treat everything. But when we do those levels, we have to make sure we're not in the room at that time. Okay. So uh, perfect places for disinfection, um, hard to reach areas, cracks and corners, any storage rooms that increases your shelf life, you're getting rid of the ethanol, you're getting rid of the bacteria, you're getting rid of mold, um, packaging and drying rooms, chillers, freezes. This is a great option for you uh, for, some, for using something to sanitize that airspace. And then processing rooms, it's always a high recommendation to go that way. So what I want to do is I want to quickly give you guys an understanding of an ozone generator and understand how simple it is in terms of design, in, in terms of making an ozone generator, where ozone solutions feels we fit in, is have, helping you guys through the application process. That's where um, it is, where engineering is required, where designing is needed, and where consultancy is needed. Um, but in terms of the generation point, normally um, starting here at the beginning of the system, you have compressed air. So basically taking air from the atmosphere and putting it into a tube or into a pipe. Uh, we do some filtration, get rid of the humidity, get rid of any type of dust, um, any filtration that's needed. We do that so the air is completely clean. And we run this through an oxygen concentrator. Another word for an oxygen concentrator is a nitrogen remover. We remove the nitrogen element from there and we have oxygen going through. So it goes from 21% to about 92 to 95 to 97%. So it's in those high 90s where we get the oxygen coming out of the oxygen concentrator. This means that the oxygen going through the ozone generator is four times the amount of that it should be at. Therefore, you're generating more ozone. And once it goes through the ozone generator, once again, the ozone generator is basically two plates that have a lightning storm. That's why when you go outside after a lightning storm, it smells very fresh. It's because the ozone was created and it sanitized all the impurities that are in there. And that's the whole plan is that our goal is to break that oxygen down to create ozone so that we can then utilize it in different applications. So as the ozone gas passes through, we have it go through a manifold. And then if your application, you only wanted to use ozonated water for product and belt sanitization and using it on your equipment, that's completely fine. We'll just use a water injection system. But if you wanted to use it also in a gas form, so you wanted to use ozone gas in first processing, use it in your chiller room, use it in your processing room, these are additional zones that we add. So here on the right, you have your gas zone one, two, three, four. These are different rooms or different application points. And then you have your gas to your ozone injection system. So once the ozone gas for the ozone gas injection system comes through, we actually pass it through a venturi injector. This is where we get the ozone into the water. So customers normally supply us with the clean, fresh water from the city. This is either somewhat filtered or is we, we look at the city water analysis to find out what type of water is actually available from the city. If there's high chlorine or there's high impurities, normally recommend a filtration system. So that's that's mostly my job that I do is that I come and I look at all these different parameters to make sure that your system is functioning correctly. So once we have your water coming in, um, 
from your city, we actually pass it through a, a pump over here. And that pump is basically to control the pressure going through the unit. So if we're going to be running about 25 PSI or 35 PSI across your facility, we would put that into a contact tank. We want all the ozonated water to go through this contact tank. And that's because we take a certain amount of water and we inject it using the venturi. Um, and we inject the ozone right here. The reason why we do this, the venturi works at high efficiencies, but you need that right flow and the right pressure to go through that venturi to get the efficiency that you need. So you mix it, this is a baffle tank, so the water goes up, goes across and back down. You have an air vent, that means any unwanted ozone gas or oxygen that wasn't dissolved is off gas, goes through the ozone destruct unit right here and gets destroyed and this is, this is called off gas. This is oxygen that comes out of this unit. So it's completely safe. It's very low levels. You're not going to increase your oxygen levels in your in your room that this unit is sitting in. A lot of people ask us, hey, is this going to be uh, a hazard in terms of getting above that 25% mark? You are not. You're probably going to get to 21.1. .1. It's a very low increase um, of, of oxygen that we're using. Um, once that goes through the system, we actually have an ozone probe. And the reason why we put this dissolved ozone probe is to actually know the ozone concentration in the water. That's our goal. Our goal is to make sure that the whole recirculation loop is actually set to a right concentration. So when we talk about this recirculation loop, normally we tell customers to create a recirc loop around the whole facility and then drop down, make drop downs to where ozone is needed. And these two uh, points to this. Number one is that this recirculation loop allows constant ozone. So as soon as the uh, location is open, you get immediate ozone and you actually maintain the ozone concentration whenever it needs. Therefore, if someone just opens a tap to wash their hand, within a few seconds you have ozonated water. If this loop is not there, the water has to travel through the whole process before it actually gets to the point of use. And that's normally people don't wait or you're not waiting for this time. So that's why our goal is to create this recirculation loop. But it's also to make sure that the concentration through this whole process is maintained. So the water goes through your process, comes back and goes back into this pump. So this pump maintains a pressure throughout your whole process. Therefore, you're getting constant ozone, you're maintaining temperature and you're also being able to produce constant ozone for the disinfection step. And that's how we track our ozone levels throughout the system. So looking at this, I want to talk about different processes along the way in the poultry industry that we have ozone systems currently that are working on. So I'll talk about um, these different applications in first processing and second processing. So uh, first processing, we use aqueous ozone instead of hot water or instead of using other chemicals, we use ozonated water. So before and after it goes into the scalder. This is a great application. You don't want to use high temperature water for making ozone or for injecting ozone. You want to keep the water below 70 degrees. So what we do is we use ozonated sprays before and after the scalder application to provide that sanitization step. High temperature doesn't create a bad space like other other chemicals does. It actually creates an odor or it, it, it off gases a lot. Ozone gas in the scalder application, we actually just drop it so it's not too much off gas. We use it in the spiral freezes. This is a gaseous ozone application. If you if you have spiral freezes, this is a great application to put ozone gas because it's long. You have a long contact time and then you can have a low concentration and that allows it to get a better kill overall. Um, your off all trailers. A lot of people use cinnamon or they use some scent to reduce the odors that are coming out of the off all trailer. Our goal is putting ozone gas, not just masking the smell, but actually destroying the odors and viruses and bacteria because what happens eventually these bacteria uh, from the off all trailer end up in the plant and you don't want this happening. So that's why we use ozone gas, destroy this. Therefore, overall, your plant is at a higher uh, phase throughout sanitization. Uh, belt sanitization, even when you go through first processing, a lot of uh, processing places like to sanitize the belt because you have blood drippage or you have some sort of impurities or 
uh, biofilm growing, you want to use ozonated water for sanitization. And that's the same thing that you would use for uh, second processing for bell sanitization. And then deboning, anytime you need to use a water to help with the cutting step, we highly recommend you using ozonated water during the process. Um, moving on to second processing, where a lot of you are probably using um, ozonated water right now. Um, what our goal as ozone solutions is, is not just to provide you with, hey, ozone is used for product sanitization or bell sanitization. My goal and our team's goal is to come to your location and actually walk through and give you a site tour of every place where ozone can be used. Therefore, we can make sure that we're hitting a sanitization, provide you with the right spray nozzles to use, provide you with the right flow rates to use, provide you with the right um, method to actually measure the ozone concentration. These are all vital in making sure that ozone is applied correctly on your product. Um, the ozone spray or, or the ozone system, it's not, it's not the, it's, that is not the final piece of this puzzle. Yes, it is, but it's also the application, making sure that it's the right application or the right concentration for this type of sanitization. So once again, we use a lot of aqueous um, ozone for the second processing. Um, all different cut lines, pipe uh, parts, um, any totes that you need to wash, any utensil, wash down, any clean in place. I would recommend using ozone heated water over other uh, over other chemicals that you are using for your process. One thing that I haven't touched base on much is that ozone once it gets with sanitization, even if there's a little bit of ozone left and it ends up in your drains, it actually helps sanitize the drains as well. With other chemicals, you find BOD and COD levels start going up because of these organics that are ending up in the, in, in, in the wastewater. But with ozone, ozone actually is used as a wastewater sanitizer. We, we have ozone systems that are used for wastewater sanitization. So we are actually sanitizing the wastewater before it even ends up at the wastewater location. And that's one step closer to paying less um, bills at the, at the back end. OK, so here's just a couple of um, I wanted to go through a couple of uh, application points here. So this is this picture over here shows uh, someone using aqueous ozone to spray on conveyors after process is being used just to make sure everything is completely sanitized. We use ozonated water. You can see it's a low pressure wash. It's not a high pressure wash. Um, and what we do is we have ozone spray. We spray from the top and the bottom. This is um, not extremely high levels of ozone. You don't need 10 ppm of ozone. Between two, the two and four ppm range is ideal for sanitization. Uh, product sanitization, same thing. You have a multiple range. Um, if, you, if you're doing the scalded application, you can turn it down a little bit. If you need it to go for a specific application for product sanitization, this is a picture that we took from one of our uh, that one of our customers provided us for sanitization. Um, this is between two to four ppm. We try to sanitize the product going through. We have the New York rinse. We have um, the OLR. Um, we, we we do we do ozone sprays on the on the cutting step throughout all the parts. Um, we use ozonated water, and then our recommendation to our final uh, final process is that we want to use ozone water throughout the whole process, ozone gas throughout the whole process. But we do need the aid of another chemical to to do the final dip. And the reason why we do that is because ozone always converts back into oxygen. So you need you need that final coat. And that's why ozone solutions works very closely with our PAA or chlorine reps from your, from your facility. And the goal is that we are both working towards the same point. We're working to get you guys to category one. And that's that's our goal is working together and making sure that everything is hit across the line, making sure that there's no blame game, but there's actually a team working together for you. Um, and then as I spoke about gas application, this is a cooler room where a uh, customer is uh, storing boxes, uh, storing product, um, anywhere where 
these these big HVAC units is doing a lot of air turnover. I highly recommend putting ozone gas in. Right now, you're probably not using any type of sanitizer in there. It's a great point to add another ozone or another step in there to help sanitization. We have a lot of processes all over that do use this. Um, so I will maintain it. We like to maintain below 0.1 ppm. As I stated earlier, our OSHA regulations is 0.1 to 8, uh, 0.1 ppm for an eight hour day. And then we do uh, we want to make sure that we don't have cross contaminations or low uh, odor reductions. Um, we also want to make sure that the ozone gas can get into all the cracks and stuff. Um, not a lot of customers. Um, I've probably only seen it at a couple of locations that actually do wipe down of the top roof or the side walls. It's some often seen that a lot, someone would get like a long um, scrubber to actually scrub the top. Ozone is a great, great application point if you're not scrubbing the top of your, your application or your processing room. The ozone gas will get there and will treat this. This is a precise low level concentration that we're using during production. So moving on to something that ozone solutions has worked very closely with the poultry industry as well as with the seafood industry is that um, Customers want to make sure that the system is running correctly over a certain amount of time, or if there's any alerts or any alarms, then they're notified immediately, or we can do something about it. So this picture over here shows this is a, one of our locations that has an ozone system, um, and they want to maintain 3.5 ppm throughout the whole recirculation loop. So we, we basically put an ozone system there, and this is a time period. I just pulled this report. It said for the last six hours, and you can see it, the set point was 3.5 ppm and it just stayed around that concentration. We did see a bump after at about 7.30. Um, we, we contacted the location and asked them why that happened. And they told us that someone went in and was trying to change the numbers. They thought they needed more ozone. But we spoke to them on the phone. They dropped it back down. We said, don't worry about it. Redo the test. The customer redid the test and we found out that it was actually human error when they were testing it the first time. So these are the things that we provide. Uh, it's remote service. We can re it's remote lo lo logging in. Anyone you can have specific people throughout your pro uh, throughout uh, throughout sanitization that if you want to provide them with the logging in capabilities, that's fine. We also have alarms and alerts. You can get a text message or an email from you right away if there's something is off. Um, I do want to give you a little bit of what ozone solutions can provide in terms of a product line. So as I spoke about a gas and a water system blended together, this is great for a, a, a location that wants to do uh, both gas and water and try this out. Um, this is a dual zone system. Um, you put it and it has the gas and the water. Our water zone, you can see we play on the word of the zone portion. So it's basically water zone means the water attribute plus the ozone and 200 stands for the, the grams power that it makes. Then we have a mobile zone. This is this is probably the best option to go with if you want to do a trial run. We have a couple of locations that want to try using ozone for the wastewater applications or for sanitization to so compare it to other. So we have these systems available for lease, rent, or even purchase. It's completely up to you. We are flexible in that way because we want to show you that it works properly before we even put something in. Um, and we have custom ozone systems for your locations. So you can see this unit. This is our water zone 200. But if I go back to this picture that I showed earlier, it looks completely different. This is because a customer requested or we went to the facility and we found out that, hey, we're going to need X, Y, Z on top of this. That's my responsibility. That's our engineer's responsibility to make sure that we are providing every single element to make this successful because the ozone system, as I said before, it's simple to design. It's simple to make an ozone system, but to make sure that the application is working correctly, that is the high point and that's when our engineering and comes into this process. Um, service is something that's extremely big with Ozone Solutions. We've uh, we've taken on a lot of contracts recently, um, and our number one goal for you, you guys, as well as all 
of our poultry industry team members is that service. We want to make sure if there's someone um, that needs help on a Saturday at 4 p.m., we are there. We have someone available to take this call. Um, we have multiple locations, as I said, Arkansas, Iowa, Pennsylvania. These are our locations in the United States. We also have a location in Canada as well. So we have ca uh, Canadian reps as well that are able to go to your location and make sure that the system is running correctly. Basically, Ozone Solutions works very closely with EPA. Um, and the reason why we do that is we want to make sure that all of our products are EPA registered. Ozone Solutions is EPA registered. Um, and we we work along those guidelines. We have FDA and USDA. Um, our goal is basically integrating with both those two departments to uh, make sure that we abide by all the rules. Um, OSHA, once again, off gas. A lot of customers come to us saying that they have off gassing issues or OSHA has an issue. So um, that's why we our monitoring equipment is made sure that we maintain those concentrations so we don't surpass the OSHA regulations. As I stated throughout this whole presentation, our whole idea is to come to your location and make sure we have a design for your application. We do the site visit. We actually come down with either myself, another engineer, um, a sales engineer. We have all these people that come down to your location and we actually design a system for your application. As I've said this before, is that manufacturing ozone or manufacturing an ozone system is simple. The application is what's important, and that's why we need to do the site review. We do a lot of consulting during installation to make sure everything is correct. I even go back further and I look at your water analysis that's coming in from the city. We need to make sure that the water that we're using to sanitize can be treated before it can even go onto your process or go onto your product. And that's something that we look at one step at ahead of a time. So. Um, we, with that system, we then integrate it with your factory settings or your factory um, design. So that what that means is even if someone new that comes into this location wants to look at the ozone system, just by looking at the picture, they can, or by the HMI, they can see exactly where the ozone is going to, either if it's going to um, step one or process, first process, or second process, or going to parts, chill, wherever it's going to, it'll actually give you an exact level for that. So that, that's why we, we integrate the system in that way. We work very closely with the QAQC department. And the reason why we do this is because there is a sanitization step, but we also need to have it monitored. We need to monitor this step throughout the whole process. And that's why we designed this whole um, monitoring display that would help it for sanitization and would show you all the data log and how it works throughout the whole day. That's very important to us, and I know that's very important for you guys when you go through auditing as well. All of our systems are manufactured in the USA. Um, they engineered here, and we also manufacture them here. That's something that's great during these times, but it's also great when we're looking for parts. We have components available. We have a ton of inventory that we can send something over to, and we can have it change right away. And then one thing that's provided is we have a nationwide service team. So we have a service team here in the United States. We also have a service team in Canada. So wherever you located, we can actually have systems. Um, to be honest with you, we have systems that are all over the world. We have a couple of systems in um, Europe. We have systems in the Middle East. We have systems in um, Australia as well. So we have systems all over that we actually send service technicians. So that's our goal. Our goal is to provide you with engineering capabilities and service capabilities that can help you through this process. Okay. So I'll leave this page up. This is our QA, QC section. If you have any questions, I'd like to go through them. Um, I do apologize for the two interruptions that have happened. Um, these are our two contact information. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to sales at ozonesolutions.com or even service at ozonesolutions.com. You would see a lot of companies would just put sales and they'll say, hey, we want to get a sale. That's not our focus. Our focus here is service and we want to make sure that you guys are satisfied. So that's why we've also put service in there as well. So let me just go ahead and open up the QA, QC section. If anyone has any questions, um, you guys can go ahead and respond over there and I can go through um, the questions that you guys have. 
Um, I'm, I won't share the, the name of the individuals that are coming through. So here I have a question. Uh, what type of log reduction can we expect on poultry? So we've done a lot of testing both in gaseous application and water application. So our focus is to provide you with a log reduction throughout your whole process at multiple steps. So um, we've seen between a one to a five log reduction on each step. So our goal is to provide you with a multiple step approach throughout your whole process. And then make sure when you go into packaging with the PA, you have a extremely clean product, which has a very low bacteria level before it goes into sanitization. Okay. All right, here I do see one other question here. Um, basically, the question is what how does ozone be manufactured from oxygen and can liquid oxygen be provided? So basically in processing areas, we use a lot of compressed air um, or we use a lot of ozone. So therefore, having liquid oxygen through this process is not something that's ideal uh, because you're using a lot of it. So therefore, compressor is something that a lot of facilities have. Either we can supply a unit, a compressor directly onto the ozone system, or we can have it uh, built in with the system or have an option. That's why I put an inlet here where it's an option or it can be put. So it's all dependent on what you need for your application and we will change it and customize it according to that. Anyone else have any other questions? Uh, we do have trial data that can be shared. Uh, we work very closely with Food Safety Net Services. Um, we can share that information. We've done over 32 different tests uh, on poultry and sanitization, so we can provide that information with to you. Ozone Solutions also is part of the International Ozone Association, so if there's any research completed, uh, by anyone in the industry that is published. We work very closely with uh, universities as well. Um, and we, we're currently working with two universities to help with the poultry industry. We work very closely with them and we can provide that information over as well. Okay. Anyone have any other questions that I can ask? Answer for you guys. Okay. All right, then. So, what we'll do is um, if you guys want to re watch this presentation, we'll be putting it live again, or we will be putting a recording of this um, on our website or on YouTube or something like that. Um, and we'll, we'll share that, we'll share it with everyone that's uh, that has joined us here. So if you have any further questions, uh, my recommendation would be going back to this slide. If you don't mind just sending an email to sales at ozonesolutions.com or service at ozonesolutions.com. Right. Um, otherwise, thank you everyone for your time. And if you have any thoughts or any uh, critics, please do reach out to me and I can try to see if I can improve on that. Thank you.